Let me read the statements of three big theorems. Yes, 0.1.6, Chinese remainder theorem. If M1 through M sub R are relatively prime in pairs, then the system of simultaneous equations x congruent to b sub j mod m sub j, j equals 1 through r, that's the same as the number of m's, has a solution for arbitrary integers b sub j. The set of solutions forms a single residue class mod m equal to m1 times dot 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 through m sub r so that there is a unique solution mod m. This result can be derived from the abstract form of the Chinese remainder theorem that's later in this book in section 2.3. So that's the Chinese remainder theorem uh, so that you get a solution for arbitrary integers and that they form a residue class. Euler's theorem is 0.1.7. The Euler phi function is defined by phi of n equals the number of integers in the set 1 through n that are relatively prime to n. For an explicit formula for phi of n, that'll be in the next chapter, section 1.1, problem 13. Euler's theorem states that if n is greater than or equal to 2 and a is relatively prime to n, then a raised to the phi of n power is congruent to 1 mod n. So the Euler phi function counts the number of integers relatively prime to n, that's phi of n. And Euler's theorem states that if you raise a to the phi of n, that's going to be congruent to 1 mod n. All right, now 0.1.8 for Matt's, for Mott's little theorem. If a is any integer and p is a prime not dividing a, then a raised to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Thus, for any integer a and prime p, whether or not p divides a, we have a to the p is congruent to a mod p. So that's for Mott's little theorem. a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Um, a is any integer. p is a prime that does not divide a. Now, for proofs of Euler's theorem and for Ma's little theorem, those will be in 1.3.4.